initiated in the Gulf of Mexico sixty-eight years ago. You don't understand modern technology. You can let him have the mic. Yes, yeah, okay. Um, but Bill. basically, I want to. Attention. Yeah. Okay. Use the mic. Don't Take it okay. away. Thank you. Basically, uh, I thought it would be worthwhile uh, giving people who had uh, about ten minutes a better background than they unquestionably have in the history of uh, science at Hampton Sydney. We've been doing this a lot longer than almost anybody else. Uh, and if you would go to the first slide, okay. The old college was down near the entry gates across from the football field. Uh, and none of those buildings are left because they were cherry built and by the time we had 40 years of freshmen in them, which only gets you to about 1810, they had been beat to death. And the trustees decided they needed to build a new college. So they only had, had the land from uh, the, in, the gates at the entrance to uh, about where Hamden House is. Hamden House wasn't there, but, but that's about how far they had. And they bought the land from Hamden House down to Viasacra. So, okay, now they got lots of space to expand into. And uh, they only had uh, one brick building, and it was not nearly as big as, this is a model made by Richard McClinic, and he's talented and devoted to Hampton Sydney, but he has made things look a lot nicer than they were, okay? <laughs> and uh, the white building behind the brick building was built in about 1785. Uh, and was intended, according to the minutes of the board, for the first floor to be uh, demonstration areas for uh, chemistry and natural philosophy, also known as physics. And so we had a building with a designated science lab area in 1785, and there are virtually no other colleges in the United States that can say that. Uh, do the next one. Uh, the, the college in the, about 1819 decided to move ahead with going to a big fancy brick campus and uh, they hired uh, the president in those days was always uh, a faculty member who served the duties of president and got no extra pay and no release time. <laughs> but uh, Jonathan Cushing was the fireball uh, and he was uh, president and he uh, set out to build a building like the big building at Princeton. And uh, they built this one passage at a time. First passage down here got built and they moved uh, seniors into it, it's dormitory, and they moved seniors into it in uh, 1824. Then they built the second and third passage here and uh, that was going to be an educational area, and when they got around to building fourth passage, that was going to be dorms again. And so everything except eating meals would go on in this building. And they built uh, down here to the left of the picture a uh, uh, dining hall, which some of you know as the Alamo. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the central area here was only three stories high because they had to get. Uh, some high ceilings in there. The ground floor was going to be a, a, a chapel and auditorium. Uh, the second floor was going to be two rooms that reached all the way through the building and uh, for uh, chemistry and natural philosophy, physics, uh, lecture, or demonstration rooms. And the third floor was going to be the two uh, student debate societies that were here. Uh, which uh, <coughs> they needed because they had all of the books. The college had no library. The two uh, debate societies had all of the books, and so the third floor was where those books were kept. And the, the fourth, sorry, the third passage down here was classrooms. There were four floors and two classrooms on each floor, so each of the eight faculty members could have his own classroom, which meant you didn't have any faculty offices. But Never mind that. <laughs> the point is that again, we had uh, op beginning operating in about 1832, we had 
a building, an educational building with a designated science area. Next one. Now, uh, that only works as long as you have few enough students that everybody can live in one of the dorm rooms. And by the 1880s, we had expanded to the point that this was simply not going to work. So what the college did was to set up a new building which would have the strange stuff from the second passage of Cushing. Sorry, it wasn't called Cushing, it was just called the college. Uh, the Hampstead didn't name buildings for people until the 20th century. Uh, this was Memorial Hall when they put it up and it had a big chapel on the ground floor, so, uh, chemistry and physics on the second floor, and the debate society is on the third floor. And it, you know, all they did was move the middle of uh, Cushing out, but that did give them all, a lot of space in Cushing for the college to uh, operate. Now, this was called Memorial Hall, and I need to detour just a little bit here. Do you have any idea why it was called Memorial Hall? Civil War. Okay. In the Civil War, by summer 1865, a quarter of all the living uh, Hampton alumni, all of them, a quarter of them had been killed in the war. People don't understand how disastrous the, the Civil War was for a generation of uh, political and professional leadership in the South. But every college in the South had a memorial hall. And they usually had lots and lots of marble plaques in them for Major somebody and Colonel somebody. Uh, this was a memorial hall for us. And the only problem with this was that we had two buildings at that point. The College and Memorial Hall. And this is now 1890, and uh, people are getting confused about if you, if you have the College of Memorial Hall, is Memorial Hall Parliament College or not? And at that point, they started thinking about naming buildings for people. The president who oversaw the construction of this was President McElwain, and so it turned into McElwain Hall. This is always an old photograph. Um, you never saw McElwain Hall because uh, if you remember the picture I just had of uh, Cushing, it had a water tower at the end of it, which was not a very high water tower and didn't have good water pressure. And some of you might possibly remember when all the uh, hygienic facilities in Cushing were on the ground floor because there was something like water pressure there. Uh, that was where the water was going to come from to put out the fire. We didn't have a fire department, but the, if there was a fire, the fire department would come out and fight the fire. And this was badly designed and badly built, and uh, departments moved out of it as soon as they could. And by 1950, uh, when they built John's Auditorium, they were, could have chapel there, and so they stopped using chapel, which was the last thing that was being used. And so for five or six years, it was, it was deserted and eventually condemned. And students couldn't stand this. And so in the spring of 1957, they set up a conspiracy to, to burn this down. And it's brick building. And brick buildings don't burn down unless you get them really, really hot, <laughs> which means you can't fight the fire. And so they set up a, a, a labyrinth. Uh, conspiracy to have all the students in Cushing flush the commodes endlessly to use up the water from the water tower. And the uh, heavier members, the offensive line, uh, would stand on the fire hose. And sure enough, the uh, fire, fire department came, but they could do nothing whatever about the fire. <laughs> so, this, by the next morning, this was only rubble, and they, uh, <clears throat> but it was only two weeks till graduation, and they had this awful look. This was uh, right at College Road next to Cushing. Cushing was right over there, and uh, the college cleaned it up by having somebody come in and bulldoze all the, and truck the, all the rubble away, and they only had to pay him $10,000. But the trustees were really mad about this. 
and they wanted to find the students who had done this. But the business manager pointed out to them that the building was insured for $50,000 and said they were going to make a $40,000 profit from it. And at that point, they forgot about finding out. <laughs> When you do recognize, uh, this is, was the science hall, and it was named that in, when it was built and, and when it opened in 1921, and only in 1930 did they name it for physics professor Bagby. But uh, <clears throat> that's, this is from uh, the corner of College Road there, you, you recognize the fence and so on, and it was, it was a really nice science building when it was built. Uh, the Flexner Report on Science in American Medicine had just come out uh, about 1910, and colleges were all desperately trying to build really first-class science facilities. And we had what was really a first-class science facility, and the only thing wrong with Bagby was that the architect said, uh, okay, we'll design you a building. Uh, how many students do you have? And the college said accurately, about 100 total student body. And the architect said, okay, uh, how many departments go in here? Three. Uh, how many faculty do you have in each department? Are you crazy? One. <laughs> and so they built a building with three floors and three departments, and each one had a handsome faculty office in it, which nobody had ever had in it before. And when I say handsome faculty office, it had a private uh, restroom mm -hmm. and a, a research lab next to it. Uh, but and, and what Morton Hall thought of this, I have no idea. But I can't, I can't imagine it was a happy relationship. Uh, but that worked fine as long as you had 100 to 150 students. By the late 50s, we had 450 students, and we had over 500 by 1960. And so the, we set out to build another building that was significantly bigger. This building was designed for. Uh, 1,200 students, and we never got much past 1,100, but everybody still fit in place. What we didn't have was in between 1968 and the present was that all three sciences became much more heavily instrumented. In other words, you didn't have a good way to handle instrumentation. We could handle the people. We had not grown it this time, but we, we needed it. So, uh, you know about this. If you go to the next slide, uh, notice that these, <clears throat> this is now so large, Polly is so large that uh, you can't, I can't get far enough away from it to take uh, <laughs> a single picture. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, is the, this is from the corner of College Road. You can see the brick walkway there. This is the walk that used to lead from uh, Venable uh, straight over to uh, Graham. Bagby, past the, Bagby, right. Past the east yeah. end of Bagby. Uh, oh, yeah. This is a walk that used to go from uh, Venable straight down to the bell tower. And this is from, uh, well, the front of John's Auditorium straight down toward the, the uh, well, towards College Road. And uh, notice that the buildings have gotten bigger <laughs> as you go along here. This is a really nice building. Many of you have had the tour already and the rest of us have left it, but uh, this, this is gonna be first class. This is, I think this is gonna be equivalent to Bagby in being a national leader building. And only in one more slide, going back to 1972, uh, the, uh, when Alpha Sigma was formed <coughs> here, Beta Chi, uh, it was originally going to live in the Maples. And the Maples had a, a old gazebo in the front yard, which was in terrible shape. And so we conceived the idea of having a pledge project that would consist of having all the pledges to restore the uh, gazebo. And this went pretty well. And I have two pictures because we had some people who worked very hard and some other people who only watched. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so yeah, so like I said, the plan was just uh, people could 
head on over to the TI and uh, grab a drink and, and socialize. But we'll meet up again at Charlie's officially for dinner and everything. I it's six, right, Benny? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so six o'clock. So uh, if I don't see you at the TI, then I'll see you at Charlie's. So, all right. Yeah. So, Bill, the medical school was actually based here for a while. Oh, when was that? Actually, no. It was no. It was home here with Paul and Murphy. So the and so the, no, the, re the reason they left was that they didn't send him back. Did not let the med school back. Close their packs. The TI? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna pull my bag in my car. Let's get up here. Henry was coming to the coast.